Hello everybody and welcome back to the OFC style radio play-by-play -play from the fight of the night from the OFC 4 card. This was the lightweight tournament quarterfinals, so the final eight of the tournament. Plus we had um, kind of a, a ho-hum fight between um, between Scott Hans of St Steel Smith and Brett Fudishin, Fudishkin Cooper, which I thought was going to be a real banger and it turned out not to really be. The co-main event though gets the uh, gets top billing today, and that was uh, top seed from the first round of the tournament, Dirty Rob Carroll, or pardon me, Dirty Rob Scott, Robbie Scott, whose name has changed, fighting Sean Massacre Hatch. The classic battle here is really kind of striker grappler, but kind of not. I mean, Robbie and Sean are both very well-rounded fighters. They both have the ability to fight anywhere the fight goes. They can box, they can kickbox, they can submit people, they can wrestle. Um, it was really one of the more fantasy, uh, not not fantasy, um, tantalizing fights on the, uh, in the tournament. It was, honestly, I thought possibly a, a finals fight. Um, I thought these two, along with maybe Patrick Justice Osveric, maybe, maybe Chase Forth uh, were kind of your finalist bait but we got it here in the quarterfinals uh and i'm not sure how to feel about that because i mean that does mean that you know the the high point of the tournament might be here as opposed to in the finals at ofc6 uh which is coming up in two weeks time or one week time from the time i'm putting this up but the the play-by-play -play probably won't be until the week after that um this one's a little bit late just i haven't found the real time but anyways that's your your preview we're looking at a really solid fight here between two guys who can do everything and i'm hoping the fight goes everywhere so let's see what happens in this fight okay round number one we are on the way here with dirty robbie scott versus sean massacre hatch robbie scott coming into this fight eight and three hatch nine and two and we are off to an early start here with Hatch pawing out for the jab, trying to utilize his reach advantage over his opponent, Scott. Backing him up into the cage if he can. And indeed, ha Scott is giving ground. So Hatch is you know, working that through. Although, good right hand there on the counter by Scott. So he is dangerous, even while backing up. I think that that's something that Hatch is going to have to remember. He herded Carver Dahl kind of into the cage to just absolutely bum rush the beer. I don't think this fight's going to have that same kind of ability here. I think Scott is a much difficult, more difficult nut to crack. Scott landing a good low kick there, but Hatch has got him up against the cage, and we have our first clinch of the bout here. In the cage here, about forty, se about 50 seconds into the fight, Robbie Scott is kind of pinned there. Hatch drops for a takedown. Scott defending hard. And Scott pulls for a guillotine. That might not be a great idea there, as Hatch is fighting his way through. He gets out of it. Scott is rolling, though, for a possible knee bar attempt here. Gets the leg. Hatch is going to have to defend. He's calm, assertive in defense, landing a couple of punches to the face well at it. A little bit of hammer fist action there. And eventually, it looks like he is starting to get out. I don't think that knee is endangered, but the leg is still trapped. So that's a control ability for that Scott has at the moment. Scott landing his own up punches, which I don't think are going to have a tremendous amount of effect but that is what it is. Hatch is, I would say, in the superior position right now. Good elbow there. A little bit of ground and pound still coming in. Still trying to, you know, f figure out if he can get a full pin position here. Just over a minute into this, or just over two minutes into this fight now. The ability of Scott to be incredibly dangerous off his back is absolutely there. He is a savant of submissions. Very, very aggressive. But there's not really anything here. He really needs to let go of that leg and look to see if he can stand up and try and utilize the stand-up fighting. Because Hatch is a very, very good grappler. I don't really see this fight ending with a submission from Scott off of his back. Not without significant damage coming into play first. Hatch, in fact, does get that leg cleared finally. Scott rolling to try to get to his feet. Eats a knee, but he does manage to get to his feet there. And now they are exchanging punches against the cage. Hatch has still got him pinned up there, though. It's a bad position for Scott right now, but he's throwing with reckless abandon, trying to get out of there, trying to force his way out of there. And Hatch really is just trying to utilize that reach advantage. He's backing up. He's throwing the good straight punches, trying to make this fight a cage fight uh, against the cage, I should say. 
as opposed to in the open where maybe Scott has the advantage. Scott trying to get his way out of the corner now. And in fact, we are now going to circle away. So good exchange. I think Hatch won that exchange through control. But Scott definitely is proving to be dangerous. Something to be really, really worried about here. Hatch coming forward. Pawn out with that jab. He does have that little bit of reach advantage. We've talked about how Robbie Scott maybe is more a featherweight sized fighter. But Scott with a buzzsaw lumberjack style leg kick there and that hurt hatch hatch is a little bit uh tender on that lead calf now unable to possibly plant his weight the way that you would really really want to in this circumstance but can he get the job done but can scott get the job done can hatch reassert something here hatch has still got this fight at his range still working a decent kind of long pocket range it's not an out fighting game it's not a kicking range game but it is Kind of just that edge of boxing range that Hatch really wants this fight to occur at. And Robbie Scott doing some good head movement. He's not really absorbing a lot of punches here. But he's a little bit out of his own ideal range here. Big lunging jab though there from Robbie Scott. That was to the body. And that really I think ripped into Hatch who does appear to be showing a little bit of damage right now. Trying to post up. Trying to reestablish his range right now. Can he be cornered? Can he be controlled in this fight? We are running towards the end of the first round here. And there's a jab from Hatch. Beautiful counter there by, by Robbie Scott. Step forward with a big, big right hand that has floored and stunned the massacre Sean Hatch. And then he falls up with a high kick and Hatch is down. The referee looking on at this fight as Scott comes in to follow up with some ground and pound and there we go there is the stoppage referee steps in i thought that was a little bit unnecessary hatch appeared to be done after the high kick robbie scott is going on to the semi-finals and may once again get to choose his opponent this time around because that was a very impressive three minute 51 second stoppage here in the first round i hope you enjoyed the radio play-by-play -play here today the final four will take place at ofc number six and the final four is confirmed the excellence of execution, Daniel Galvan advancing to the final four in his second chance in the tournament. So that's a big deal for him. Chase fourth also with the knockout of Javier Perez Torres. Patrick Justice Osverick getting a decision and this stoppage by Robbie Scott. So you got the Brit, the Brit Robbie Scott in the finals with the American Jiu Jitsu specialist Patrick Osverick and Chase fourth, the kickboxer, as well as Texas's own wrestling scramble machine. Daniel Galvan. Leave your thoughts below as to who you think is going to take home this whole tournament. And a quick recap of the entire card. Drew Leo Captor Castellas with a victory early on in the night. We also had no line of sight teeters. Knockout Todd Sapo Williams. Captain Jack defeated the Mag Show by split decision. And as stated, the tournament results. And Scott Hands of Steel Smith defeating Brett Cooper. With a surprisingly wrestling-heavy game after Cooper managed to injure his own leg early on in the fight. And uh, Smith took advantage of that to drive it home. Although he did not seem very happy with the performance afterwards. Anyways, we'll be off to OFC number 5 next week. And that will be the heavyweight uh, tournament belts continuing. We will have our first OFC champion. Will it be Paul Gratch Warnkin? Will it be Hell's Fire Smith? Will it be the Jackhammer Hunvixen? Or will it be Meatloaf Kelso? That is your final four. There are some alternate bouts also taking place there. And I'm very, personally, I'm excited but for the debut of Mustang Nick Cordick as he takes on Matt Hook Jacoby in the middleweight division. So tune in for that next time.